Hello and welcome. This video is going to be a book review for the fantasy novel Greyfax Grimwald, which is the first book in the Circle of Light series by Neil Hancock. Now, I purchased this book from a fellow booktuber here, Book Pilled. He is my friend Matt. When I saw him do this haul, uh, one of his latest hauls, and he showed this book, I got very excited because I have this one, <laughs> Dragon Winter, and I I don't know if you know this, but Neil Hancock books are really hard to find, or at least I have never seen another Neil Hancock book since I found this in a thrift store as a teenager. So when he held up this book, I got excited because I knew who this was, and I had wanted to read more from this author ever since I read Dragon Winter when I was a kid, and I got even more excited when he said it was up for sale, so also support my friend. I bought it from him. I was at first a little disappointed, so let me give you guys some a little bit of history about Neil Hancock. So Neil Hancock, I was born in 1941, uh, he has unfortunately passed in 2011. He wrote a lot of high fantasy, so this Circle of Light series is the first to be published, so he actually has three series set in Atlantan Earth, which is the world in which this book takes place, and also this book. This is the only, Dragon Winter is the only standalone novel uh, from Atlantan Earth. This is the first series published, but the last to occur in chronological order, which is, you know, something that we've seen before, you know, like in C.S. Lewis books, like Chronicles of Narnia. They're not printed chronologically, they're just printed in whichever story he decided to tell at the time, which is similar to Hancock here. The reason why I say I'm disappointed is because I remember loving this book. Again, I have not read this except for as soon as I picked it up out of the thrift store as a teenager. The reason being is that, if you notice, I have a lot of hardcovers. I only reread my hardcovers because uh, this book right here, uh, which is Stegeman from Christopher Stashief's Her Majesty's Wizard series, or Wizard in Time series, I'm sorry, that's the actual name of the series, but Her Majesty's Wizard is the first book, and that's the reason why I got this tattoo. Uh, that book, I have read that every year at least once since I discovered it when I was 12. I have so far gone through three <laughs> three paperback versions of that book before I was finally able to find it on Amazon for like $35 <laughs> and get a hardcover version of the book so I didn't have to keep destroying these by reading them excessively. So I didn't want to ha that to happen to this book so I have only read it the one time. I remember reading that, loving it, and was so excited to read this, but this book started out so slow for me. It was doing typical things like introducing all the characters. So the three characters in this book are depicted on the cover, which makes it really nice. Or the three main characters in the book, but not Greyfax Grimwald. He's not depicted on this cover. So you got dwarf, otter, and bear. So easy to remember, right? Uh, little aside, I found it also a little bit hard mentally that um, Hancock use dwarf and gnome interchangeably as someone who plays D&D &D and also lost too many years to World of Warcraft. Those two races aren't the same in my brain. <laughs> so that was a little weird as well because this clearly looks like a gnome but in the book his name is Dwarf and he does get called gnome occasionally. That was a little jarring for me mentally just because I so barely clearly have developed what those two races are based on my other interests. But the introduction to these characters was just hard. It was hard to read because it was just like the singular story about this one character and then another singular story about this other character and this other singular story about this other character and then you would go into another story of the other character. And it took a long time in my opinion, for them to come together in a way to where the story was progressing. <laughs> and that was very frustrating to me. 
it wasn't until the introduction of the human characters, so the two wizards that are main characters in the books are Greyfax Grimwald and then Foghorn Faringway. And once the introductions of the two wizard characters into the book and their storylines, then my brain started to to enjoy the book. Then my brain started to get sucked in to the story. But it did take about a third of the way through the book before it got to that point, which is a little disappointing considering how fastly and wonderfully I remember this book. I do know that there was a comment um, in one of my last reviews, which I will put out here, talking about how they remember reading something as a child and enjoying it and then reading something similar as an adult and not not enjoying it as much and that's kind of how i felt with this like a little bit of that i guess adolescent wonder had disappeared for has disappeared from my life <laughs> and and then i got more into some critiques and criticisms about neil hanscock's writing that kind of made sense to me as to why I maybe had that, maybe had that reaction. So uh, in Grifax Grimwald, this book, he does use a lot of very, this is very good, good, light, dark, evil, bad. Very simplistic good versus evil um, imagery, very, very literal black and white as to what is good and what is bad in this book which i guess as you become an adult you understand that there are shades of gray in this world maybe not 50 shades of gray but there are shades of gray in the world so that doesn't you as an adult you maybe want a little bit more complexity in your stories or at least i do i want a little bit more mystery and complexity in the story however i again i did actually enjoy this uh once i got into the characters once I understand their relationship with each other. The black and whiteness of the bad and good also is a little bit like, really? It's like, you know, the Disney trope where every villain has, if you see lime green light, that per, that character's a, vi a villain. If you see lime green in any character in any Disney story, it's a villain. It's very much the same here. Uh, uh, in addition, Neil Hancock uh, has a lot of uh, more Eastern religious context in his stories. So the great river that these three, the dwarf, the bear, and the otter cross, so Califax Day, the great river, they cross this and to go into the lower worlds to go on their grand adventure. And it refers multiple times to their life across Califax Day. And then their previous lives or their previous times in the lower realms, which is basically a cycle of uh, death and rebirth that is prevalent in this story which I found actually kind of interesting and refreshing. Uh, I know for the book that I reference with Stegeman here there's a lot of Christianity references in this um, series as well. So it was nice to have some Eastern religion in a high fantasy book as well as the fact that at the time period that this was written this was like the highlight or the not the highlight the uh the golden age of fantasy is what this is considered. But because of, I think maybe the cover art that's on uh, Neil Hancock's books and also his simplistic good versus bad. When I read this book, reading this book, once I got into it, kind of felt like watching the 1970s animated version of The Hobbit. If you've never seen that movie, I would entreat you to remedy that just because it is a very lovely experience in my opinion um, but reading this book felt like watching that movie but with the characters in here I also found it interesting that this is a high fantasy book during the well this copy was written and well this copy was published in 1983 the story I think was written in the 70s but it's one of the few books with high fantasy written that time period that have both magic and mysticism and also weapons but like not swords and bows and arrows although it has those but it has guns so this is a high fantasy book with guns but only in so far as there's like muskets and like there's muskets and grenades and cannons 
but there's no automatic weapons. Which I found interesting that that's where that line was drawn, considering that Neil Hancock did fight in the Vietnam War. So, like, he wrote these after he came back from the war. I just found that an interesting line that he drew in the sand. Uh, <laughs> it's like, we can have guns in my books, but no automatic guns. No, that, 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 ruins, <laughs> that ruins the aesthetic, I guess. But again, I did very much enjoy this book. I do want to hopefully at some point come across the rest of the books, not only in this series, but in the other two series as well. Again, there are three sets of four books. So this is the Circle of Light series. This has four and then the other two, they all take place in Atlantan Earth. So I would like to have the full 13 books at one point in my life. I am not there yet. <laughs> I have two of 13. But I did enjoy it. If you're lucky enough to find one of these at the thrift store and uh, you enjoyed watching the animated version of The Hobbit and you still enjoy watching the animated version of The Hobbit, you'll probably also enjoy reading this book. But I'm going to hold on to this. I'm not listing this one. This one's mine. These are too, these are too hard to find. I'm not getting rid of it. But thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, next video will be more sci-fi reviews. So. Have a good day. Bye.